All right, this quick little video is on something that comes up really, really often in the field. And there's sort of the beginner side of it, and then there's a more advanced side. The beginner side is technicians who are new for getting to connect the side of their hose with the core depressor onto a Schrader core. And so they're not pulling vacuum or they're not getting any pressure through and charging or recovery. And it's really important that a new technician pays attention to which side of the hose has the core depressor on the hose itself. The next thing is thinking about the depth of the core depressor. And a lot of techs don't know that sometimes you can adjust that depth either by turning counterclockwise or clockwise that the core depressor on the inside of the hose or by pulling it in or out with needle nose. Um, that's another technique. And then, and then finally, how to replace the seals on your hoses, which is quite easy, but there's a nice little tool that I'm going to show you how to use. And finally, the inner workings of a core max core and what to do if you run into one of those, especially if you want to pull a vacuum. So pressing in cores is actually a little more complicated than a lot of technicians give it credit for. So this is a core depressor that's inside of a quarter inch you know, sort of typical VC connection port, which is really a flare. This is what a typical port is. You have the rubber seal around here, and then on the inside, that's your core depressor. And the same thing with these. But these two are a little different with how the core depressor works on the inside. You'll notice if I take this core remover tool, which is, this is the little yellow jacket seal tool, but it's got a core remover here. If I take that and I put it on here and turn it, it squeaks a lot, but it doesn't come out. Whereas if I take this one here and I turn it, just keep twisting out until it comes out. And what you'll notice is, if you look really close, that these threads, these little ridges are tapered like threads, I should say. So you see they've got a little angle to them. Whereas if I take this guy out, and i got to pull it out with needle nose, which it's nice to use. I, I use these Nibex really, really needly thin needle nose. If I pull this guy out, you notice that it still has ridges, but the ridges aren't angled. So you can see it better if I show the two next to each other. So you see on the one on the left is angled. The one on the right is just straight in. So these are two different types of core removers. And they both work with these typical, you know, Richie Yellow Jacket rubber seals that seems like almost everybody uses. If you're going to, going to be working um, either in pressure or vacuum with quarter inch hoses where you're going onto the port and you're not going to remove the cores, the typical way to do it would be to use core depressors or core depressors in the ends of the quarter inch hoses. But there is another option, which is this type of core depressor. This is the AccuTools. Blue vac core depressor. When you turn it counterclockwise, it pulls that depressor in, and then when you're ready to push in the core, then it moves inward and depresses the core. Just so that you know exactly what we're talking about, I'm going to show you what a core looks like, which I'm sure you've probably already seen before. But a core has a very low internal volume that can move through it. So when you open that, it's just a tiny little orifice that can make it pass there. So it pushes through the top here and then flows that way when this is unsealed by being pushed in. And so you can push it in further using the quarter presser like this, or you can use the one on the hoses. Now I want to show you quickly here this little tool because this is a neat little thing. I keep this in my bag and it's got extra seals in it, but it's also got this hook. So I'm going to go ahead and just replace one of the seals on here so you can see what that looks like. It's got this hook here. see this one the other one actually both of these seals are pretty good but we'll just replace this one just for the sake of it so you can take this in here and then you kind of twist it kind of hooks it out there you go so that one's a little bit worn and that's what it looks like with no seal in it and no quarter presser in it so let me put a new seal in and then you can use the back side of this to help press it in so now that's pressed in and then on this one this is the one that you just force into place One key thing to consider with these, and this comes up a lot, is whenever you have a hose or a tool that is uh, having a lot of loss when you take it on and off, it's often because this core depressor is sticking too far out. So if the core depressor is sticking too far out, kind of like, let's give an example here. So if I put this one in, this little guy in, and I leave it sticking out too far, what will happen is it will start to depress the Schrader before the seal is engaged. So it will start to depress that Schrader here 
and open that up before the seal has a chance to engage and you get a lot of leakage when you take it on and off. So what you want is you want your core depressor in as far as it can go while still doing the job of actually depressing the core. So like that right there, that's in pretty, pretty far. And so that's likely to still do the job of pushing the core in once you tighten it all the way down, but it won't engage too early or late or disengage too late, which is gonna reduce your leakage. So that's a pretty handy thing. Now, another thing is if you're pulling vacuum, you like to get your cores out. And so a lot of people will use core remover tools and they'll come across sometimes these types of cores. This is called a core max core. And this type of core can't be removed with a typical core remover. It's actually threaded in place. Now, some guys don't like these enough that they'll actually just, you know, make a new port so that they can remove the core. But one thing that's interesting about these is they have much greater internal volume. I'm gonna have to back this out so that when I depress this, it opens with, with a much greater volume than what you would get if you were going through a Schrader. So if you're gonna be pulling a vacuum on a system with a core max, you can use these core depressors and without having to remove the core completely and you'll still get a very fast vacuum in comparison with a system that has small Schrader cores like these ones here. Hopefully that's instructive, how to replace the seals, the way to set your core depressors further in as far as you can while still doing the job of depressing the cores for allowing refrigerant flow, and what to do if you run across one of these core max cores. Because again, the biggest mistake that I see guys make as it relates to all this is trying to use a hose that does not have a core depressor on a core, and then that won't work at all. You won't get any flow unless you have some way of pushing down on that core. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully that helps you know what to do if you need to replace your seals, how to prevent refrigerant loss by getting your core depressor in the right spot, and then what to do if you run into a core max core on a commercial unit. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.